Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and I'm answering questions that you asked me. So Bbump1828 says, has there been any development on center channel solutions for micro LED walls or just large screen displays in general? Yes, there has. I'm glad you asked. So my partner, Anthony Grabani, uh, has developed a system. It's very similar to, but different from the system that was developed by Meyer Sound. And to me, that's the most significant development. But there's a bunch of approaches. I've actually covered this before, I believe, for Audioholics with Don Don when we first did uh, one of the first um, direct view LED or micro LED TVs. So let's look at it this way. Think about, forget the size of like a 65 inch TV where you can place your center channel kind of close to like maybe just a little bit below ear level and your left and your right at ear level and the TV kind of up high or something, but like it's not a big TV, so it's not a big deal. Forget that for a minute because that's not what we're dealing with when we're dealing with micro LEDs. Think about the size of a projection screen in your room. If you put a center channel below it, you are so far below where it should be that the sound is coming from too close to the floor. And it doesn't sound like it's coming from the center, right? We know this is a problem. If you put it above, it's the same problem. It's way too high. It also doesn't even come close to matching the left and the right speaker. So the image does this or it does this. And then you got this idea. Well, maybe you can put one below and one above. Maybe that'll work. Well, maybe, but I've had very bad luck with that. There are tricks that make it work better than some of the other approaches, but it in and of itself is not a great solution. There is no, some people are like, well, I'm getting a phantom image. No such thing. Phantom image specifically happens when the brain is given data from to the left and the right ear that is exactly the same. The brain then interprets that as sound coming from the center. That is something that happens only in the horizontal, the azimuth. It does not happen in the vertical. Our brain doesn't use differences between the left and the right ear to detect height. It uses something else. Uh, which is our HRTF, what that, and actually the visuals. So what that means is having something below and above isn't going to hit our brain in a way and make us say, oh, I'm getting some sound from above and some sound from below, and it's the exact same signal, therefore I'm going to make it in the center. So it, it doesn't actually do that. But the two-speaker method can work. You have to shade the upper speaker, or the one, one of them has to be shaded. They can't be the same. So in my opinion, that's an approach that isn't great, but it's an option. There's the phantom image option. You can actually just do a left and a right speaker and create a phantom image. Also not ideal, but I think it's better than nothing, and it's better than putting a center channel below the speaker. There is another method that I think is probably the best method, and I suspect there's going to be some advancements over time that we're going to see that would take advantage of all of these techniques in different ways, but the best method is to reflect off the screen because it turns out that a TV is a really good sound mirror. It's an excellent reflector material. So I've heard people say, well, doesn't it screw it up? It does not. Now, some of you have said some stuff here. We at Audioholics and even I have made fun of the, as Gene likes to call them, bouncy house speakers reflecting sound off the ceiling. Here's the reality. As a technique, it's actually very effective. The problem was the implementation, not the concept. There's nothing wrong with reflecting sound off of walls or ceilings to make it sound like it's coming from there. That works very well. It's that in order for it to work, a very specific trick needs to happen. You cannot there's a, it's the precedent effect. You cannot hear the sound coming from the speaker first. The first arrival to your brain has to be the reflection. So when you put a speaker on top of a speaker and aim it at the ceiling, all the sound that's radiating off of that speaker in, in the like this way and not just up comes to your ear, hits you way before the sound hits the ceiling. Therefore, it doesn't create the effect. So you have to have a speaker that's highly directional and has almost no sound radiating this way. Well, none of the systems that were implemented, that was true. And so they were all very ineffective. So the reflecting method involves taking a speaker, placing it in front of and over you in the ceiling and aiming it at that. Because of we're using a directional speaker, we're not using it full range. We're going to be crossing it over at like probably one kilohertz. Uh, the, the Meyer sound method crosses it lower, but the Gramani system approach would cross it pretty high, around 1 kilohertz, 1.5 kilohertz. That sound is so directional that there is almost no sound dropping straight down, and there's definitely no sound of any significance. It's probably 60 dB down in the angle from the speaker to you. So there's no, from a precedent effect standpoint, there's no sound to cause you to hear it, uh, the first arrival coming from the ceiling. So the first arrival is the screen. So you take that, you timeline it, because now you've got the path link to the screen and then back to you versus the speakers there. So you have to delay those speakers up there to equal the path link from the speaker and the ceiling to there. 
and then you send the bass from those to your left and your right speakers. Or you could put a bass module in the front. It doesn't really matter how you do this, but there's got to be a bass module on the front that handles everything from that one kilohertz on down. That's pretty high up. That can be done in a lot of ways. I actually have a technique I'd like to try. Uh, maybe Anthony one day will let me try it, and we'll see if we can make that one work. But for now, typically we just send it to the left and the right speakers. And then you get a basically phantom image from one kilohertz and below and you get a reflected sound from one kilohertz and above. And it's a very effective way, and it enhances the dynamic range too, doing that, to get the, the front LCRs. In theory, you could do that for the LCRs. You could actually have a left center and right reflecting speaker. I believe Meyer Sound does that on the big systems. Our system, so Anthony's idea and the way that I've used these systems before have been for residential, which are smaller, where like the micro LED is 150 to 180, maybe 200 inches. But those micro LEDs, those direct view LED TVs can actually get much, much larger than that. And in commercial scenarios, they are much larger than that. They're like 12 plus meters wide. So think about that. Like 38 feet, something like that, 39 feet wide for like a commercial cinema. So way bigger than what we're dealing with in residence. And those scenarios reflecting the left center and right off of the screen makes sense. And then what you can do is for everything in the lower range, again, you have some speakers up front that handle that. But it, at that point, the height isn't as important. Because remember, when you're putting the speaker at the right height, it's the tweeter that has to be at the right height. Because that's where that directional stuff is so it, uh, dominated by. So that's the advancements we have today. I There are other approaches people are using, like really low profile speakers that are right under the screen and right above. I don't think those work. I'm not a big fan of those approaches. Um, I've not been convinced by the ones that I've heard. There are, so some of the stuff that I think could be viable, but we're, it's not there yet. And I and I don't, I haven't heard this work yet in a way that I think makes sense. But Sony's played with this with their TVs. Is you can put transducers on the screen material itself. You could... They don't have the best, they don't have very good dynamic range and they don't have the best frequency response. But if you were to use like a combination of methods, I suspect that you could probably put an array of these transducers on the screens themselves. You could have high frequencies reflected off the screen and you could have mid-bass drivers that are around the screen and you could combine them using DSP to create something that might be the best of all worlds because you would then be able to have directional mid-range that moves around the screen. In fact, it can move in two dimensions and it wouldn't, so it wouldn't just be this, that's just one dimension. You also could have height. So I think that that would be kind of cool to be able to do that. And then you would have the high frequency stuff reflected off of it, which I think is necessary because as I said, the, the radiation pattern and the mm. Uh, frequency response and the dynamic range and everything else of the transducers is not very good. High frequencies are one of the areas where it's worse. So like I like the reflected high frequency idea for that. And then of course it's not going to do bass. We're going to have to probably cut it off at like two, 300 hertz. So then that's going to have to go to some separate bass drivers that are around the screen. But there's ways to make that kind of hidden and low profile and then blend in okay. So uh, so that would be the advancements in that area. And one thing I'll say, for those of you doing high-end uh, TV-based systems, there's no reason why this reflected system can't work. Anthony did a cool video on one that we worked on. Um, Might have been designed before I started working with him. I can't remember if this was one I helped design or not. Sometimes we design things where like, we do it, and then I don't really pay attention to it for a while, and then it gets built, and then I see pictures, and I don't remember, but it was something that I maybe contributed to. I might not have contributed to this one. But it's a media room. It's got the reflectance speaker in it, and he's did a video on it where you can see it. But the TV is not a direct view LED TV. It's actually, I think it's a 65 or 75 inch TV. It's just a regular one. That's okay. Um, so kind of the way I see the future going is you put a center, uh, you put an in-ceiling speaker, you know, in the ceiling, but it's a special one. And you don't aim it at you, you aim it at the TV. You run some special DSP processing, and there you go. It just sounds like it's coming from the TV. Um, it's a techn it's a technology that I kind of wish I, it wasn't there yet when I built my house. Like that's how recent this development has really been, but it's gotten to a point now where I really think you could fit this into a space that can be very hidden, uh, very easily hidden in the ceiling. Um, and it's something that you could be doing even with regular LCD TVs. So hopefully this is helpful. Keep watching. I got more questions to answer. <laughs>